In this video, I'm going to talk about a rhetorical figure called congaroos. Here's an example. It's from the novel The Old Drift by Namwali Serpel. Agnes, her head out the passenger window, took in the smells. Sun-baked earth, the coppery funk of untempered sweat, a sprig of fruit, the rot of rubbish, wood smoke, the green smell of green leaves. Congeries comes from the Latin word for pile or heap, and it means word heap or list. You can find this definition and others in a handy book called A Hand List of Rhetorical Terms by Richard Lanham. Here's the passage broken out into its parts and with some of the things that I noticed highlighted. Before I get into the structure of this congeries, it's relevant that the character Agnes is in a new place and that her olfactory experience of it, what she smells, is of particular importance because she's blind. The congeries not only gives her sensory experience of smelling this new place, it also uses sounds and rhythm to create an auditory experience for the reader. I'd be interested in how any of you synesthetes or those who associate sound with color see this passage. I'm gonna to totally geek out on this because that's what I love to do, but before I do that, the main thing I wanna get across is how the congeries, the list of smells, is constructed in a way that both conveys Agnes's experience and creates a sensory experience for readers. One thing that stands out to me in this list is the structure of modification, the way adjectives and the preposition of are used. All the elements of this list of smells involve some modification, and there's a cool pattern to it. Also, the list of what Agnes smells interestingly combines explicit smells and things that smell. This is a kind of funny difference to think about and, and one I think the passage encourages. The description of what Agnes smells invites readers to think about how their different senses are related in different kinds of perception, including reading the passage itself. Now I'll look at each of the parts individually. The first thing that Agnes smells, sun-baked earth, has an adjective and a noun, but the adjective itself is a compound of sun and baked. So sun-baked earth has a kind of hidden complexity, though it's one of the shorter elements of the list. The next element, the coppery funk of untempered sweat, is much longer and has the basic structure A of B, a smell and then its source. But here, both the A and B parts have two elements. It goes adjective noun of adjective noun. Coppery is an interesting smell adjective as it can also be visual as a color, and it's not uncommonly used to describe a taste as well. The rhythm is nicely balanced with the multisyllabic adjectives modifying monosyllabic nouns on each side of the of. Coppery funk, untempered sweat. The next smell, or in this case, thing Agnes smells, a sprig of fruit, has the same A of B structure, but just one element for each part. This simplicity complements the freshness of sprig. Next, the structure repeats and includes the alliteration or repetition of an initial sound of rot and rubbish. These lines share the structure noun of noun, which heightens the contrast between what they describe, fruit and rubbish. How Agnes smells or perceives them also seems different. A sprig is a thing, a part of a plant, not its smell and rot is really a process or a state, the one um, associated with smell, as are fruit and rubbish themselves. These complex sensory images are described in a regular rhythm. You can easily scan the meter of this list just as you would for a poem. Sun-baked earth, the coppery funk of untempered sweat, a sprig of fruit, the rot of rubbish. The next smell, Wood smoke is the shortest element of the list, though still a compound, not just smoke, but the smoke of wood, as it were. The final element returns to the doubled A of B structure and emphasizes it by repeating the same adjective, the green smell of green leaves. This final element explicitly combines color and smell, bringing together these different ways of perceiving. 
The Congress as a whole, I think, invites readers to think not only about these specific details of Agnes's perception, but about the role of our senses in perception generally, including how we imagine fictional characters. So I've only talked about a few of the many things going on in this congress, but I hope that you enjoy looking at some of the details and that you'll start to notice the many different kinds of congress and different ways they're used in lots of different kinds of things that you're reading.